any testing this one for the design course. This is a laboratory policy, but each single course is expected, by, expected to abide by Brown University Code of Academic Integrity in the context of this course. You're certainly allowed to talk in life. There's too many else in the lab says, hey, what's the name of that register? I'm going to say, I can't tell you, you're not in my group. You can, of course, come. So, the, 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 the breakdown is basically that as long as you're talking, if you're talking to somebody about Korea about, about their hardware, that's fine. As soon as you pick up the mouse, move the mouse, or this, or put a wire in their whiteboard, that is not allowed. So, allowed, homework to code must be shared within a group, and not allowed to share any material between groups. Allowed to talk in lab about code with another group. Not allowed. Emailing code to another group or using another group's keyboard and code. Allowed. Showing other group your circuit. Seems reasonable. <laughs> what do you mean by SPI? Where are those wires go? Just fair enough. Okay. What's not allowed is write a wiring for another group or renting them your circuit. I've seen that happen. See, this looks familiar. I have a pretty good visual memory for circuits and for artifacts in displays. So I think it's all the detect copy code by the way the TFT boots. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You're not allowed to copy anything, even one sentence from any web or printed document, unless it's quoted. It's really easy, once you get in the habit of this, to detect code or detect code, detect words from Wikipedia. There's a style that Wikipedia encourages. You get somebody, they're writing along, and somebody there's this thing, that's boilerplate sales speech. Wait a minute. No, don't do that. I'm allowed is using code for final projects for web sources with attribution, but not allowed is without attribution. That's going to be relatively good to use this year, because there's no code for Big 32 from the course. So you're going to be writing the code basis for next year's class. Yeah. The session on lab reports, now she's obviously going to read that. But also, you might notice, right here are some PDFs of good labs that you might want to read to see the level of detail we expect in a lab report. It won't be literal because, of course, these are all AVR, but, but you'll, this will give you the level of abstraction that you need to understand. Read this page completely. You are agreeing to it by taking the course. You better know what it says. I need to get a quiz on this page. I can still do that. Any questions about the logistics? Your lab partner must be in the same lab session. You will be in your scheduled lab session, and your lab partner must be in the same lab session. If you're in the final project, you want to make a group that spans lab sessions, then the demo will be due at the earlier lab period. Uh huh. I've seen this one before. Yes. Homework is required to be done in a group. One homework per group. You hand a few homework? Well, first, first, first homework, okay, because some of you may not have groups going into the first lab. You may get assigned as person in lab. I'll take we'll multiple homework that time only. After that, it must be a group. Reads the value on the TFT display. We're moving from uh, Alpha America SCG to full graphic, full color LCD this year. 320 by 240, full color, 2.2 inch diagonal. You can see the cool things you ever saw. It is beautiful. Uh, we'll leave the capacitor down on a meter along with whatever documentation you need to make sure that the code is running. You might want to have a blinking LED on the screen or on the board, whatever it is. DTNF dialer. Do you know what DTNF is? Little tone, multi frequency. Those are the tones you hear when you push the buttons on your cell phone. Yeah, listen. So, it turns out that in the bad old days, when there were actual phone lines between phones, there needed to be a way for analog systems, well, analog. There had to be a way for analog systems to signal each other. And the way this was done was to choose pairs of frequencies to represent digits to send the audio over the copper. And the audio was chosen in such a way that human voices can't generate the code. So the two, the two tones that are generated, technical tones, the two tones that represent each digit are non-harmonically related. Which most people cannot do. They didn't use home and whistle two different frequencies. If you could, then you could do DTMF by whistling. So there's at least one person who could do this. Because you could dial by whistling. And hum. When you go to DTMF dialer, it's going to. 
memory so that you could enter up the 12 digits and then it'll save it back at, 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 at the DTMF standard signal rate, which is a CCIIT, CCITT standard, I think. Then we're going to do an NTSC television video game. NTSC is an old analog standard. The reason for using it is that the write rate to the television is very high, so you can do good animation. Also, a television screen is the cheapest LCD display you can buy. They make millions of them, even though this isn't used for broadcast anymore. That just is completely obsolete for broadcast. But this is the major market for NTSC television right now. This looks completely floating without backup monitors for cars. The things on your dashboard are NTSC television. They're cheap. They're going to make millions of pretty cars. Last one will be a motor controller. Did I spell it right this time? Yeah. Controller and tachometer. So you'll build a attack that allows you to measure the speed of a fan. And I'll ask you to write a PID closed loop control system. Oh, more differential equations. Well, a PID control system to regulate the speed of the fan within a few RPM. And to change the good transient response and the usual stuff you want to do with the control system.
a gap which is internal to the microcontroller. It's only four bits. So it's kind of cheesy. It's a four bit gap, but you can run it really fast. You can do sound effects. You can even do voice. So the four bit voice is just fine. So you can do things in the video game like say, Loser! You know, you can, you can make any sound effects you want, but there has to be some, and it has to be direct memory access. It can't work through the CPU. Motor controller, we'll be using infrared sensors. Uh, RS-232 serial, so that's a, a, an old South Korea protocol, which that's been used quite a lot. Auto isolators, because you are nuts if you drive a motor directly from a CPU. You have to use auto isolation, otherwise the noise will kill you. And, true, isn't it? Yeah. And, and uh, PID control, so proportional integral differential control, so that's where the calculus comes in there. All code examples are online, as I said. Put your laptop, you want to follow along? Yeah. For the final project, you must stick with a PIC32. You can use another variant on the PIC32. We're using the PIC32 MX250F128. If you wanted to use a different chip, let's say one that is in thin quad flat pack with more I.O., I would like you to do that assuming that you buy it. And the downside of that, the upside of that is you have more I.O., you can have hardware Ethernet if you wanted it. Which if you have that hardware USB but it does not have hardware Ethernet, you have to add that. Some of them have hardware Ethernet built in. The downside is there ain't no support for it. You do that, you are on your own. So, that's your 32 yard condition. So we're not falling back 8 bits. You can't use an arm. the work has to be done on the PIC32. The other half can be done on anything you want from Android to Windows. So if you have a project that required a bunch of MATLAB processing on the back end, you can certainly do that as long as it is still primarily, more than 50 percent, a microcontroller project. <laughs> so you want to make a bad acquisition system, one megahertz data acquisition system for your Android phone. That's not cool. Yeah, cool. That's not, yeah, good. Well, maybe some of you like any other questions? You have one. Start reading the uh, support pages, the TFC uh, page, the photo thread page. There is a lot of reading to do before Monday. Monday is the last time you can answer questions. No, I answer questions. You have questions. So come next time, Friday, with lots of questions, folks. Thanks.
Friday afternoon session. Layout is going to matter. Noise is going to matter. 
You may well find that you have to filter out the same emails. This is all by way of saying, this question is an analog class. This is what Should we have that extra guinea spread guide? Any questions about the documentation you can ask? Just a lot of it. There's a lot of specific I.O. libraries we're going to be using, some you already know. Standard I.O., STD.I.O. will we'll give you the 